there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have three uh, blends from uh, South Africa here in front of me. And um, they, were there all common threads? Well, uh, vaguely roni varieties, uh, but uh, some of the varieties in there aren't so roni. Like, for example, the first one. Uh, it's got a bit of pinotage in there, not very much, it's only got 3% pinotage. Uh, but this is Secateurs uh, from the Bardenhorst family wines. Ardy Bardenhorst uh, used to be winemaker at, oh dear, I can't remember, was it um, Rustenburg? Um, yeah, I think it was Rustenburg, but uh, making his own wines for quite a, quite a time now. Uh, so, blend Shiraz, Sanso, Grenache, Mourvedre, Pinotage. Most of it is like, 40, yeah, Shiraz and Sanso, those, those are the two big ones. Give it a whirl. Do they still make that jammy dodgers? Uh, there's a fl there's a smell in here that really reminds me of um, uh, jammy dodgers. Um, you know, the, those biscuits that had uh, a heart shape, or if you were lucky, uh, poking through the middle, and you used to bite them around the outside and be left with that core of um, biscuity jam, or jammy biscuit, depending on your philosophy. Um, but uh, it's got this slightly medicinal uh, blackberry, herbal, um, yeah, a bit of plum in there, but um, jammy dodger. What's really lovely about it is it's it's fresh. It's almost a wine that you could um, shove in the fridge and um, and serve ever so slightly chilled, not too not for, not for too long, but half an hour or so. Um, it's got this um, quite juicy, friendly berry plum fruit, uh, and it's those berries that are halfway between red and black. Things like the loganberries and uh, uh, and mulberries. And this fresh finish. Um, I, I'm not sure whether it's got been anywhere near any oak. Uh, blah 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 bush vines granny old oak casks old casks fine complexity unique character and yes it's got this it's got this earthy freshness about it um it's um very very tasty i'm gonna have another swig ah it's a hot day here and um uh, i was slightly disturbed about having to taste uh, some beefy reds and um that's not a beefy red at all that um that is, well if it's beefy it's carpaccio Wine number two. Uh, this is Higovale Heights Shiraz Mourvedre Viognier, uh, 2011, Western Cape. Was the first one Western Cape? Um, the first one, uh, I can't see anything on there. Coastal origin. Anyway, let's give this one a whirl. This is dumber, more brooding. Uh, maybe it's not going to be as uh, fresh and lively. It's 13.5% alcohol on the first one, going to 14.5% for these last two. Um, but um, it still doesn't feel like it's gone over the top and, um, and into the jammy spectrum. Also, it hasn't got what I call the cape bake. It feels like the fruit here is, uh, has been... Uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's quite pristine fruit. Uh, and, but because it's quite rich and spicy and, and earthy in the first place, it's just that that's coming through. And um, uh, it smells like it's going to be quite intense. Uh, certainly not maybe the ideal summer red, but a um, bit of class to it. Well, I like that rich, juicy, full earthiness. Uh, bold berry, uh, the, a bit of plum, a bit of smokiness in there, and uh, even something like a slightly uh, sun-dried tomato. Um, but um, I, it's, it's strange. I, I, it, the, the first one was a hard act to follow. Yes, it was a different, it was a different, very different style. Uh, but it still had a, a touch more wildness uh, on there. Here, it feels like it's been just made in a little bit too regular a fashion. I like it, but. Um, I would have liked the person who made the first one to have been given this fruit to work on it. It's, uh, I, I think that there was a uh, a wilder, uh, more fascinating wine to be made. It's still, it's pretty good, but as I say, uh, I'm slightly, I'm on the secateurs at the moment. Final wine, uh, the tin mine, Syrah Grenache Mourvedre uh, from Zevenwacht Vineyard in Stellenbosch. Let's give this one a whirl. It's got that just been opened uh, reductive smell. If you're not sure of reduction, um, think of um, the open a can of beer and you've got that tss, that uh, uh, that plume of gas and that, that slight rubbery character. A little bit of that that going on here. Uh, wouldn't be surprised. Th this is the wine I almost want to um, get a big jug and sort of like you know, two jugs and chuck it into one, chuck it into the other, chuck it into one, chuck it into the other, uh, and let the wine come out of its shell. Feels like the fruit behind is quite rich, rounded, voluptuous, um, but um, the danger is, I mean, screw caps. Um, uh, it, it's it's one of the issues that uh, that quite a lot of people have with them. If you uh, bottle a wine and it has a hint of that there, 
sometimes it magnifies under the screw cap. Um, so I'm going to give it a bit more swirling and uh, then I'll come back and tell you how it tastes. Because there's quite a nice chocolatey, rich, plummy character and uh, berry. I haven't still haven't, uh, got around to tasting it. Um, the, it the more I swirl, the, yeah, the, the, there are these characters coming out. It feels like there is quite a wine here. Uh, but it's just whether they have um, managed to, uh, the, the, the things that I'm smelling, which I'm not so keen on, whether they will dissipate with time or whether they're always going to be part of the wine. Anyway, I'll come back in a moment. Okay, I'm back now. Um, and I still, when I come to taste it, I still get a little bit of that uh, that character. I also get a little bit of, I was talking about the smoky cape bake on, um, I can't remember which of the earlier wines. I get a little touch of that um, uh, but it's in the background. It's not. Uh, it's not dominating the wine. So it's. Uh, uh, it, it's. 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 It's in balance with the rest of the wine. So I. I, I don't mind that. Um, my concern is uh, more how whether whether if I if someone were to open this and drink it straight away whether they are missing out on um, extra pleasures. I'm really not sure, honestly. Um, I, what time is it now? We are at five o'clock here, uh, and I'm, I, I, I've said I'll take these bottles round to uh, uh, taste with a few, a few other people later on this evening. So we're going to be tasting them about eight o'clock, um, and it'll be fascinating to see how uh, how, how that's developed. I have a feeling uh, it will have come out of its shell more, but um, I'd be, I, I really can't work out whether that reduction is always going to be hanging around and just sort of niggling in the background. Um, for me, the star of them is the, is the Secateurs. It's, it's a lovely, gentle, juicy style. And uh, it's a style that when, when people talk about re refreshing red wines in, in warm countries, point them to something like that and say, this is what you can do. Um, so uh, maybe before I do my eight o'clock tasting, I might have a little guzzle of that. See you soon.